All right, welcome back. I'm so excited today to dive into social media, which is one of my favorite topics, but something that I know can be really overwhelming for a lot of people, especially for new health coaches and entrepreneurs. And what I hear all the time from health coaches is that I'm posting and nothing's happening. I'm not getting any engagement. I'm not getting any likes. I'm not getting any DMs. And I want to kind of dive today into some of the reasons that might be happening. Now, one of the first things that I tell people before they even dive into creating content is you really need to understand your audience. You need to understand the problems that they're struggling with. You need to understand the symptoms and what they're actually currently experiencing in their life you need to understand where what their desires are. Where do they want to be right now? Those are some of the most important things. Now, I usually have people go through a very in-depth customer avatar so they can create messaging that's going to connect with people. But that's often one of the things that's making it so your content isn't converting, is that you're not really speaking to the pain points of your audience. And sometimes you're just providing educational content that's not going to illuminate a gap in their knowledge. A lot of people know they have symptoms. They know what they have symptoms, but they don't know what the problem or the root cause is to that symptom. So if you're speaking about the problem, they aren't going to associate with that. And I'll go into that more in a minute. So this is one of the biggest things missing is you don't understand your client. And so you can't create messaging that's going to grab them and allow them to see themselves in that content and self-identify and connect with you on it. Also, you probably don't have things planned out. You probably are going day by day and deciding, okay, this is what I'm going to post today. And that can be just the most stressful thing. It can mean that you're spending two to three hours a day brainstorming the content and then creating it. And it's just, it's very clunky and it's not a good system. So we teach all this in depth in the business mentorship experience, which starts in a couple of weeks. And I can't go too far in depth because that could be a two to three hour masterclass. But if you do want to master social media, learn content creation, bulk planning, that's all taught inside the business mentorship experience with myself and Dr. Cabral. So the next thing is that you're, again, you're not creating a strategy. So you're going day by day. It's really important to create your content plan, not just what you're going to post for this week. You need to look farther ahead than that. You need to know, when am I running a promotion? What am I launching? When are sales going to happen? Do I have something special like a detox that I'm planning? And how can I work backward from that? So I always recommend people plan their content out three, six, 12 months in advance, because then you can work backward and decide what the core categories are that you're going to be speaking about and how you can walk people from not aware of their problem at all to aware they have a problem. Because again, they know they have the symptom, but they don't know what the problem is. And that your solution is the one that's going to help them get to their end goal faster and easier. So We've got the customer avatar and messaging. We've got the strategy and long-term planning. And then we've got the fact that a lot of people use social media. They post their content and then leave. They put all this time and effort. They're stressed about it because they didn't plan ahead. And then they leave the platform. But social media is a social platform. So you want to actually be spending and, and delegating time each day or creating time each day for you, for you to engage with your audience. Go and like and comment on their posts. If you're not doing that to them, they're not going to be doing that back to you. So one of the quick you know tricks of Instagram, which is what we're going to dive more into in a second, is that the people who see your posts are also going to see your stories. And stories are where the money is. That's where most of the conversion and conversations happen. So if you are always engaging with other people, they're going to start engaging with you and you're going to get more comments, more likes, more DMs. And then those people are also going to start watching your stories. Our goal really is to push people to your stories because that's where the deeper connection happens. That's where you start conversations. That's where they build the no like and trust factor. And so it's really important that as you're putting content out there, that you're really engaging as well. You're not just hoping that people are going to come to you because again, it's a social platform. So you want to be spending time every single day reaching out maybe to the people who follow you, but also to new accounts. Go to hashtags with maybe the symptom. Let's say you are a menop you know, your niche is menopause. Go to the hashtag of hot flashes or one of the core symptoms that people in menopause have 
and start to leave real advice, real valuable advice on those posts, those people are going to come back and watch your account and they're going to start engaging with you. So that's going to create new fans and followers. But if you're not doing any of that, you're just posting, leaving, hoping for the best, your growth is going to be very, very, very slow. And you're not going to create those connections, which is what social media is really about. So now I want to kind of dive into Instagram because Instagram is the best platform out there for nurturing and building relationships. And that's where, honestly, most of your your sales and clients are going to come from, is the interactions on Instagram. So other platforms like TikTok, Pinterest, those are what we call outreach platforms. So if you're going to be working on more than one platform, which I usually do recommend, you want to have an outreach and a nurture platform. Instagram is the best nurture platform there is. And maybe TikTok or Pinterest are also the really good outreach platforms. So the goal of Instagram, if we're looking at big picture goal, what are the goals? We want people to remember you. So let's say you put up a reel, it gets shown to 300 new people. We need a reason for them to remember you and to come back to your profile. We want to create connections. Again, that's where it all happens, is in the connections. We want to have people self-identify with your content. So we're going to dive into that more in a minute, but if they can't see themselves in your content or identify that what solution you're providing is something that they need, then they might just move on. We want to give people a win. We want to give them a win because that's going to trigger the reciprocity reciprocity effect, (laughs) which is if you give someone a win, they are more likely to purchase from you and come back to you because they feel almost indebted to you. So you become the person they go back to whenever they want a recommendation on something or they're willing or they're ready to work with someone as a coach. You also want to build trust and authority. That's a huge one. The no like and trust factor is a really big deal, especially in the coaching world because if you're not if you're not building that trust and showing your authority and showing that you know what you're talking about, there's a lot of other people they can go to. So you really want to build that. And it's really important to do that in stories. That's, again, where a lot of the behind the scenes happens. You also want to create aha moments for people. (laughs) So that, again, is like they have this symptom. They've got this current reality in their life, but they don't know what the root cause is. If you are the one to show them what that root cause is, Again, they're going to keep coming back to you. They're going to thank you and feel so grateful to you for providing that aha moment for them. Then you want to trigger the bandwagon effect. The bandwagon effect is a really big deal in sales because people want to know that other people want the same things. So if you're, for instance, in your stories and you're posting social proof and you're posting testimonials and you're posting desire and demand for your services, that's going to actually push other people over the edge to work with you as well. So now I want to dive a little bit into the different types of content, specifically on Instagram. And people call these all different types of things, but the way that I want to break them down is into four core kind of buckets. One is what's called problem-aware content. So the problem-aware content is, again, what's going to kind of create more of the aha moments. So it's allowing people and making them aware what their problems are. Again, they know what their symptoms are, but they don't know what the root cause of that is. And so that's what problem aware content does. Then we've got agitation content, which is kind of what they're doing wrong and what mistakes they're making. And oftentimes people kind of shy away from agitation content because they think it might, you know, cause a little, you know, rift, but it's not going to. This is so, so important is making sure to kind of agitate the problem. Like you're making these mistakes and here's a better way to do it. You know, have you spent the last 10 years trying to lose weight by exercising more and eating less and it's not working? Here's why. And here's the actual solution or reason why that's happening. So then you've got solution content, which is what have you done? What's the solution to their problems, and how has that allowed you to see results? So again, this is really important, is what is the solution? Now, there's a lot of different ways we can format this type of content. And again, I go really deep into this in the business mentorship experience. But 
all three of those types of content are going to grab different types of people because there are four distinct buyer types. And they all kind of gravitate and need some a different piece of content to push them over the edge. You also have people who are at all different levels of awareness. Some people already know they have a problem, but they don't know what the solution is. So the solution-based content is going to help push those people over the edge. It also helps you walk people along that awareness scale. So you've got people who are completely unaware. They have no idea what their problems are. Then you've got the you know people who are semi-aware and then people who know they've got a problem, but they don't know you know, what the solution is, or people who have a problem, they know the solution and they're shopping for options. And then there's the people who are the most aware, who are, they know all the options, they're just waiting to pull the trigger, right? And those are the people who are the most ready to purchase. So they're the closest to a buying decision. So our goal is to help move people down that awareness scale to where they're ready to purchase. And if you're the person who helps them move farther along that awareness scale, when they're ready, they're going to buy from you. So the fourth type of content is transparency content. And that is where you're showing behind the scenes. You're showing results. You're showing what other clients have experienced. You're also talking about your own personal results. And it's helping again it's it's not just testimonials it's it's sharing stories and it goes a lot deeper into showing behind the scenes how you actually helped someone achieve this and that again is going to push another layer and type of buyer over the edge so within these content buckets there are a lot of different types of content you can actually create and you can create time lapses you can create mini trainings promotions client wins you know, you can document your personal life. You can, you know, cycle through the problem agitation solution. You can screenshot applications. There's there's plenty of different types of content you can use. But what I want to focus on right now is stories because stories are a very underutilized medium on Instagram. People will post stories of their dogs and their personal life almost entirely. And that is a really important part of stories. Yes, you want to be sharing behind the scenes of your life. You want those components of your personal brand to be included, but you also want to utilize it for your business and be very strategic with it. Because if you, stories should be used to, again, help people make that buying decision, to cycle through the problem-aware, agitation-aware or the agitation and solution content. And so there's a lot of frameworks, and I'm going to give you one framework right now, which I love because it is a really good way to encourage engagement. And that's a lot of what stories are. Stories are a lot about getting people into your DMs. You want people to reply to your stories. You want to use polls. You want to use the little button that says, you know, click this, and it shows their interest. Because then you can move them into your DMs and start conversations. And conversations are what are going to build your client base. It's much more likely you're going to sign a new client after they have DM'd with you than it is that they're just going to go straight to your link in bio and sign up for a free call. You're going to convert at a much higher rate by getting people into your DMs. So here's a simple story framework for you. This is going to follow kind of the agitate or the problem aware agitation and solution content. So it starts with maybe it's maybe five or six slides and it starts with, are you someone who struggles with X and the X is the symptom. The next slide, I used to struggle with this and now I'm X, which is the outcome. Now I feel amazing. <laughs> then the third slide, what did I do to take action on this? Or what do you do to start taking action on this? What result did it create? And I want to share how I did this with you. And then you add your call to action. So that could be DM me. It could be comment health. It could be whatever your call to action is. I also always recommend polls. And one really good tip for polls is if you have a poll, you want every answer to be positive. You want every answer to be a yes in some way. So are you wanting to overcome, you know, your hot flashes, for instance? The first answer would be yes, with a bunch of exclamation points. The next one is 100%. The next one is let's do this. So maybe you get 10 people to respond. 
all 10 of those people you should send a direct message to. Now, this direct message should not be you immediately selling. This should be you starting conversations and saying, I hear you. This was really hard for me as well until, you know, I I did X, Y, and Z. So I wanted to provide a simple framework for you so that you can start to think about ways that you can maximize stories to create conversations. So if we go back to kind of the beginning here, we're talking about how to use Instagram to nurture your audience, to build the no like, and trust factor, but also to get more strategic with the way that you're creating content, the way that you're communicating with people, because it's really, it's all about the messaging. It's all about getting people to self-identify, giving them that aha moment, and showing that you can provide real results and that you understand their symptoms so clearly (laughs) that you've helped plenty of other people overcome them as well. And you can do that by creating this content on your feed, engaging with people so that they know you exist and you're creating that, you know, back and forth conversation. You respond to their DMs as well. Again, this is a social platform. And then you are going to push people to your stories. And in your stories, you're going to show behind the scenes. You're going to create these multi-sequence story slides. You're going to create polls and you're going to start responding to everyone who answers your poll. These are just some of the simplest things that can help you really build your business with Instagram over the next couple months. And it can happen and change the amount of leads you bring into your business very quickly. I've worked with influencers whose entire business was run via Instagram stories and it was a significant business. So I highly encourage you to re-look at the way that you're approaching social media and look at it with a bigger lens, look at the big picture, plan ahead. And if you need help with this, I go much deeper into all this in the business mentorship experience, which comes up in the next couple of weeks. Dr. Cabral and I teach this and we work with you for six months. We have workshops twice a month. We have a Facebook group. You can ask me questions anytime you want. We have, you know, tons of step-by-step walkthroughs, not only for social media and content creation and email marketing and building your business, but also weaving in affiliate marketing and creating your packages and just so many other things. And it starts in a couple of weeks. And I would love to see you guys in there because for me, I hate talking to health coaches who are struggling with gaining new clients because they just don't have the right strategy. They don't have the right framework. And We've got a combined 40 plus years of building businesses, of maximizing social media, and we want to share it with you. So if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the podcast, check out the business mentorship experience, and thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the show and I will talk to you again soon.